Stainless steel, what every boat owner should know. In this video we'll be explaining why all stainless steels are not created equal. We'll be telling you how stainless steel has properties that make it weak, how it can actually corrode and how stainless steel can leave you right in the doo-doo when it friction welds. We'll also be looking at the welding of stainless steel and what you need to do in order to make it last. We'll also be looking at the build-up of stainless steel and what you need to do to ensure components are really good stainless. Make sure you watch to the end to find out what you should be using on your boat. Stainless steel comes in all shapes and forms. It can be extruded or drawn into rods, box sections or tubes. It can be hot forged into bars and rods. It can be bent, shaped, punched, drilled and machined into all sorts of shapes. But not all stainless steels are equal. They're not all the same chemical makeup. And it's very important in the marine industry that you get the right type of stainless. Let's look at some of the basic characteristics of stainless steel. But before we do, remember that stainless steel is actually an alloy. Like brass and bronze and types of aluminium, it's made up from different metals. Stainless steels have the following characteristics. They're corrosion resistant, they have reasonably high tensile strength and are very durable. They're temperature resistant, easily formed and fabricated. They're low maintenance attractive in appearance, environmentally friendly, well they're recyclable. Ferretic, martensitic and duplex stainless steels are classified as magnetic, whereas austenetic is classified as non-magnetic. Well, what does that mean? 304 is the most common type of stainless steel. It contains 18% by weight of chromium and about 8% by weight of nickel and therefore is often referred to as 18.8. It is used for many applications including cutlery, kitchen equipment, food processing equipment, automotive and aerospace structural components and marine fasteners. But leave it outside in a marine environment for just a couple of days and you'll see why it's not the right type of steel for you. So what is the right type of stainless steel for us to use on a boat? Well generally it's this middle one, 316. Now I'm going to insert a caveat to that. There are actually many types of stainless steel and they range in their properties and they're all known by different names or numbers but generally 316 is what you want to use on your boat and as a general rule 316 is non-magnetic or austenetic. So why do you need to know that? Well when you go looking for your fixings, fastenings and stainless steel bits and bobs take a magnet with you. Stainless steel has some weaknesses too and we'll describe all of them in a minute but they're quite important considerations. The resistant to ferric oxide formation commonly called rust or rusting results first from the presence of chromium in the alloy specifically from the propensity of the exposed chromium atoms to form an invisible adherent chromium rich oxide film that displayed the further characteristics of being able to self-heal reform in other words in the presence of atmospheric oxygen after it's been disturbed i.e. scratched a variety of modifications to the content of stainless steel can improve corrosion resistance even further and these include increasing chromium above the levels of 11%, the addition of 8% or higher amounts of nickel and the addition of molybdenum which improves the resistance to pitting corrosion. What does that mean in layman's terms? Well, generally stainless steel has to be clean and polished in order for it to form a surface that is impervious to the salty sea environment. To do this it needs to have oxygen or air which contains roughly 19% oxygen. Salt water also contains sufficient oxygen to do this. Provided the water is moving that is or can move around it and not stagnate. 
once the oxygen is used up or the water stagnates, the oxygen is used up in the formation of this impervious barrier. Where there is a lack of oxygen or stagnated water, the lack of oxygen allows the stainless to corrode. For example, in this picture here, we call this crevice corrosion. It has a distinct appearance of black pitting of the material and may have black liquid around it. The pitting can be quite deep if left unattended. It can literally corrode right through a bolt, fixing or flange or fitting. And note that this is not galvanic action and can occur in fittings and fixtures well above the waterline. And this is one reason that washing your boat down every now and then with cold, clean, fresh water will help to preserve the stainless steel fittings and fixtures. And it's another reason why rigging, chain plates, turnbuckles, fixtures and cotter pins need to be regularly inspected regardless of their age. Let's have a look at an example of crevice corrosion and some of you would have seen the video that we did on this Volvo water muffler before. While the outside of this device looks lovely and shiny, the internal starts to rot away from the first day it's used. Many of you will have seen the telltale rusty streaks in the bilge if you happen to have one of these fitted or had to replace it within a certain period and that usually is within two to three years. The cause is the welds on the inside are unpolished and untreated and crevice corrosion under the clamping bands or jubilee clips where they join the stainless steel end caps. In both instances the lack of oxygen causes crevice corrosion either in the end cap or in the welds and premature failure of this component. It's not really the right material for such a thing to be built from. When we challenged Volvo about this, they said it's a consumable part, despite it costing 600 euros for you to change at a dealer. If you want to see the video in full, I'll put a link in the description and at the end of this video. Stainless steel will stretch under load. There are various tables available that can quantify this in the various types of steel. But again, in layman's terms, as you torque the stainless steel bolt or nut and it loads, it will stretch. As it settles, it will not apply the same compressive force. Here's an example of that. Your keel bolts will probably be 316 stainless, grade A4, if they're actually stainless at all. They'll be in the region of 24 millimeters OD or diameter, just under an inch. The initial torque setting for this size of fixing is 603 newton meters or 444.5 feet pounds when dry fitted, or 543 newton meters or 400 feet pounds when lubricated. If you were to then go back and test the torque or check it at a later date, the stainless steel will have stretched. Applying the same torque again will stretch the bolt further. Continue to do this over a period of time and the kill bolts will actually snap or be severely weakened. The way round this, do not re-torque stainless steel bolts or nuts. If you suspect that they were never set correctly in the first place, then only tighten them to 60% of their original setting from the data sheet or replace them entirely with bolts or nuts set to the right torque. You should certainly not be retorquing keel bolts made of stainless steel if you do not know the history. After all, you wouldn't do it on a car cylinder head, would you? And it's the same principle that applies here only more so. While a strong steel, stainless steel has a tendency to work hard, becoming very hard and brittle under repetitive loads. Drilling stainless steel has to be done slowly under pressure and so that the cutting edge of the tool actually cuts any rubbing 
or a lack of cut in pressure will darken the steel and it will work harden to a point that it becomes locally harder than a standard high speed steel drill bit. The trick is firstly to drill slowly with a sharp drill with a lot of force so that the bit cuts clean spirals of swarf from both the cutting edges of the drill bit. Use water or a water based coolant to keep the drill bit and the steel cool but better still, use paraffin or white spirit as a coolant and a lubricant, if you can get hold of them. Use a cobalt bit. These are extremely hard, but they can be up to 10 times more expensive. But these bits are ideal for drilling stainless steel. But again, being harder, they are somewhat brittle. When using stainless steel fixings or bolts, the nuts under load can gall or friction weld, making the nut and bolt weld together before they are in their final position. There is just about no cure for this other than cutting away the bolt or nut and replacing it. If you're strong in the arm and weak in the head like me, you can sometimes snap the nut or the bolt with lots of leverage. But above 12mm or half inch, you'll need extremely long lever or very strong arms. So how can we avoid galling? Well the first thing is to slow down your installation speed. Don't use bolts to pull joints together. Use a lubricant such as Tef Gel. Avoid damaged or dirty threads and use extra care with lock nuts. If a fastener binds or begins to bind, you should stop immediately. So while we're, we're actually outside the Chandlers here, these guys are great. Um, Ozaturk Marine or East Marine, uh, they're actually in our marina and they're, they're really good, they've got all the stuff, they sells a lot of second hand stuff as well. So you know when you want the odd bits and pieces He's quite often got a second hand one. But a couple of things that uh, I wanted to show you. This is a hose clamp. And this is a you know a quality German hose clamp. Made, uh, it's actually stamped inside, a stainless. But look at this. This is the bolt which tightens it up. And you can see that that's just mild still possibly coated and there's a galvanized one same thing and there's another one so again this piece is stamped stainless steel but the, the bolt that goes through the center is just an ordin ordinary carbon steel so when you buy hose clamps or jubilee clamps, make sure you take your magnet with you. Make sure that the securing nut that tightens it up is not magnetic and it's not carbon steel. The same thing applies when you're buying fittings or fixtures. Make sure you're getting what you're actually paying for. And the same with some fixings. Now some fixings can be very slightly magnetic, especially if they're an A480 grade. But talk to your supplier about this. If they're reputable they won't mind you asking questions. This is our local steel fabricator and he's very good. He never throws anything away because he knows the value of good quality stainless steel. And when you want to go and have something made he's usually got something there which will fit the bill and may be able to be repurposed. Everything that comes out of the workshop is extremely well polished and here he's making some extension pieces for a fishing rod holder for a frame we're about to look at. Let's take a look at the welding on this frame. So this is what a good stainless steel weld should look like. They've been acid etched and then have a high polish. These are really good welds. And this is the type of quality you should be looking for if you're having welding done or you're approaching someone to do welding for you. Don't be afraid to ask for samples or to see samples of their previous work. 
a good fabricator or engineering shop will only be too happy to show you the type of quality that they can turn out. The difference in world quality is pretty much self-explanatory. What you see is what you get. On the left is a bad world done with a MIG welder and on the right a good world with a TIG welder. The difference pretty plain to see. What you see is what you get. Metology is a really complicated subject and there's lots more detail that we could go into but not in this video. If you go to our website and then scroll over to the technical stuff you'll see that there's a PDF version of this video which you can reference or use with your sailing club or just general information. You can download it for free along with lots of other bits and bobs. Pop over to svimpavidus.com Hopefully this video has been of use to you. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Sail safe.